Good morning, family of faith. Thank you so much for attending service with us today. Today's scripture comes from 1 Chronicles 16.34. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. Good Lord, we thank you for your presence here. Good Lord, we ask that you to touch every single life. Good Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Good Lord, we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen.
The only announcement I can think of is Preston and Shelly had their baby. Baby Oakley got here um, bright and early Saturday morning, 1.47 a.m. Um, six pounds, 14 ounces, and 20 and three quarter inches long. She is long and skinny. <laughs> Everybody's doing great. Thank you guys for your prayers and all of your support. I know Preston and Shelly really appreciate it. Um, and I do too. Mimi's on top of the world. I don't know if Mimi's happier or great grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Great grandma and great grandpa are there. <laughs> Look at them. Man. Mom's like, it gets better and better and better. What's going on around here, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know either. <laughs> um, this uh, next Sunday night is praise and worship night. We are going to do prayer at 5.30. Uh, doors will be open and then worship at 6. And, Pastor and Jared. Yeah, remember Preacher and Jared. We miss them. Um, and I know Fawn is just Hi, Baba. Baba. so sad. <laughs> we love you, Paul. Um, but just remember them and keep their, their safety. And by flight, still okay? They land? Not yet? Oh, man. <laughs> They're still in London? We missed their crazy flight. No way. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's going to be great. <laughs> Prayers for preacher and more prayers for Jared. <laughs> yes. Yes. Anyway. Um, thank you guys for being here. We love our pastor, but okay. Uh, Usher, would you please come to take the offering? He's so much fun. He is. The most fun, so. Hey. Baba. Alright. Greg, would you please pray and receive our offering? Every time I come running, I find grace on the relief. You welcome me with open arms, no matter where I have been. Every time I surrender, every time I fall, I find grace more precious. So I'm gonna Yo. 
There's no doubt. You are the guide. You are the assurance of our lives. Thank you, Father. Amen. In Jesus, in your glorious name, we pray this morning. And we all said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. I'm going to play with this microphone for half a second. And we're going to get started. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. And I was talking to Fawn, and it sounds like our boys are uh, getting to know a little bit of London they didn't want to know. <laughs> but they should, and we need to pray for them, that they will be on the red eye and in time for their tour to start tomorrow morning. So they had a lot to do the first morning of the tour. So I know they are just chomping at the bit, so let's keep them in prayer. What a wonderful opportunity, and we got to be part of that for them. And so, God bless you, Jerry. God bless you, Pastor. And hi, baby Oakley. Good to see you, too. I know she's watching also. We are in such a time, are we not, that um, <clears throat> there's a lot of challenges going on in this world. The thing that, that concerns me is there's a lot of challenges going on in our United States. And sometimes I would kind of compare it to uh, putting a size 9 jean on when you should be wearing a size 11. It's just not quite coming together. Uh, Preston said Oakley says hi too. Oh. <laughs> See, okay, there's my day. <laughs> You know, you squeeze into those jeans and you think, oh, I made it, I got them up. But the gap is that far between. 
the snap or the button or whatever you're using to bring them together. This is the United States today. We are being squeezed by enemies all outside this world. Granted, we're part of it, but the United States people per se, we're not part of this squeeze. We're the ones that are being squeezed. And this is what I want to talk about today. <clears throat> uh, for those who do not know what the end times are, I'm going to give you a 101. I know that you guys are pretty much students of the word, so please bear with me, but there are many out there who are not. And the end times has to do, we know when Jesus died and was resurrected, he is said he would be coming back. We're coming, that's considered the end times. We are coming to this point where Jesus comes back the second time. But what we're going to talk about is the previous, that time just before he actually comes back to get to be with us. Okay? We're going to talk about the rapture. We're going to talk about the seven year tribulation. And that's all historical, that's all in the Revelation, the book of Revelation, book of Daniel. There's several books, Thessalonians, there's several books that can. That, can, that will reveal all this information I'm going to talk to you about. But I'm going to a certain aspect that I want you all to pay attention to. And it may be new to your thinking, but bear with me. The Antichrist is going to be sent to dominate this world. He will be under the guise of Satan. Satan will be his mentor. It, the the uh, there's, their trinity is Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. We have God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. Everything that, that God does, the devil imitates. The Antichrist is coming for one reason, <laughs> basically, is to abolish all, all the believers. That is his goal, to make sure we miss heaven, to finalize those who are left behind, to finish them off. Satan is not a friend to anyone. He never will be a friend to anyone. He is an amazing liar, but he's not a friend. The Antichrist has come to dominate. He will dominate the religion of the world. He will dominate the politics of the world. He will dominate the economics of the world. That's the whole goal. That is a one world government. That's what that is in a nutshell. And if you watch today, our government, I, I would say it's almost slipping away. To has come down to dominant people running this world and trying to run the United States that has not been voted in. It's not the Democrats, it's not the Republicans. It's these, these guys, these people who are putting together this forum to dominate us. Pay attention. Now this is not a new thing. Uh, back in the, in the day, Genesis, our first book of the Bible, we had a Tower of Babel. And a man named Nimrod tried to assemble the world people that were there into building this tower, that's called the Tower of Babel. They literally were building a tower to be, reach the heavens. And the whole uh, premise to that was they wanted a one world government. They did not want God to dominate them. So they decided to build this tower. Well, we know that God came in and he struck that down. And when he struck the tower down, he divided the people up. They were all talking the same language. Well, he divided them into different languages. And so, Groups developed. Are you hearing me? Yeah. But God had to do something to stop this stupidity. Yeah. He did not create us to be lost like that. Yeah. And there's other great leaders, uh, Napoleon, Hitler, all with the same mindset. They all came in to dominate this world under their, their power. That was a whole thing to them. 
Every one of them got thwarted by God. Every one of them got stopped by God. Well, what makes this power system or forum different than those? What is the word that is used to help them dominate this world? It's called advanced technology. You know, God said he'd come back, he'd return back, and uh, Jesus said he'd come back and go, to, go spread, spread the gospel throughout the world, did he not? Yep. And, and bring as many as you can into my house. Well, it's happening through technology. Technology is what's working. It's reaching places we would never consider being reached. And if you look at some of the third world countries, they're walking around with phones in their hands. Yeah. That's unbelievable. And if they don't have a phone, somebody else does. And the technology is connecting us all together, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Right. It depends on what's being taught, what is being said. And this is something that we need to pay attention to, church. <coughs> and who is a church? Who is a church? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? We are. And who are we, Amy? I mean, who are we that makes us different from the world? God. That's a connect. And if you can't tell, I like to teach adult classes. And my class is used to me nailing them. <laughs> but that's it. That's our difference. We are God's chosen. We're, we are God's family. So I asked... Our adult class here at the church, I, I sent them a video request for them to watch specifically about this forum that I want to talk about for half a second, okay? And the name of the video, and it, you can find this on YouTube, it's What is the Great Reset? And it's presented by TBN. It's Trinity Broadcast Network. You need to really pull this up. What is the Great Reset? And it's uh, Eric Stockelbeck is a main speaker, and it's about just less than an hour long. But they bring in five different speakers on the aspect of one world order or the one world government. Mm -hmm. Please watch that because it gives the perspective of the Bible concerning the events of this forum. It's it's a, it's an analogy to that. So you get a lot, and I'm not going to break that down for you today because you need to take the time and look at it. But it's real. I'm going to put that link in the description of this video right now. Okay, so thank you. M's, M's are, yeah, thank you, Emily. <laughs> this movement is called World Economic Forum. I see heads nodding that you've heard about it. It's been, it was established in 1971. It is accelerating. And I'll get to that acceleration in just a second. But the, the leader of this is Klaus Schwab. And he organizes a meeting of the hierarchy. These people are chosen to come together once a year in Switzerland. And they make major decisions on our world. They make decisions on our world. Did you hear what I said? They do. Yes. It is not voted. Did you hear what I said? Yep. It is being shoved down our throat. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Pay attention to this. See, what happens, what the devil does, and if you don't grasp this, you're going to get lost in it. He does not stop. He is relentless of selling something to you. And finally, either if you don't swallow it, you just cave because you're sick of hearing about it. It is worse than any child wanting something and 10 times worse than a new teenager. So grasp that one. But that's who he is. And so he found this world, this order, these men that he could, and women, that he could manipulate. And this is Satan manipulating. These guys think they're in control. <coughs> Nobody is in control but him. But this other guy is making delusions come out of this order, this forum. 
and we're losing people. Hearts are breaking down. And this could be possibly what they call a great falling away in, in Thessalonians and in Revelation, where even the believers, the elite, start melting and falling away because we don't want to hear this. We don't want to hear I don't want to hear this. I don't. I want everything to go the way it should go. After all, I'm a great grandma now. Do you, do you understand? I don't want my world rocked. But this is being rocked. We can put our hand in, head in the sand just so long, and then we are going to suffocate in that sand. Why did I say the form is moving forward? Let me tell you what Jane Fonda said. COVID is God's gift to the left. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. COVID is God's gift to the left. Who's the left? Amy, help me. Who's the left? The Democrats. The Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. It's anything defying the law of God. Right. That's the left. Yeah. COVID is God's gift to the left. What COVID did, it accelerated this world so quickly into submission, it was, makes your head spin. Yeah. That's why Fonda said what she did. Oh my gosh, look what COVID did. Now we can really push this forum because people are literally sheep. And this theory is real. It is a cheap theory that is, we're living in. It is not a conspiracy, people, because it's past that. Because why isn't it a conspiracy? It's because these, these people who have come together with this forum are literally speaking it out in public. That's true. Yeah. So it's no longer, no, don't say, well, it's just go, could happen. It's happening. That's the difference. It's no longer under the category of conspiracy. Right. I'm not smiling. I am just saying, wake up, Pat. Everyone, wake up. The technology that we've talked about, advanced technology, what it did, it, it, it has become a co cooperation between different areas of the world that they, if you, if, when you pay attention with COVID, how many different nations came together and said, well, we have to wear masks, we have to separate, we have to, we have to, have to. And I watched, I watch a lot of times Europe, and especially in London, I watch when things become uh, a way of life that we are not doing at all, and how s consistently, maybe even slowly, cross that great, water yeah. and infiltrate us. It's just like the East Coast to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma, we said, well, they're going to happen to us. But we're in a size nine right now. We're being squeezed. Yeah. Lockdowns, the social distancing. What all that brought about is one word and one word only. Fear. And fear is a loaded gun that the devil uses against us. Yep. And don't, don't even get me started on, on handguns or anything else or <laughs> ARs or whatever else is out there. That's just, is, again, anything that keeps us with our hands tied behind our back is going to be what they're going to come after. Correct. Anything. So what do we do with this fear compliance thing? I mean, was COVID real? Was there some COVID cases? Sure, there was some. But not, was it, was it induced from this whatever virus, whatever? I, I don't know. I do, that, I do know from, from, I have family that's, that's in medicine 
And a lot of people brought in with the guise of COVID, it wasn't COVID at all, but the COVID connection gave the government money. We just, I, I go to the, the cancer clinic once a month for infusions, and we just released last month that we didn't have to wear masks any longer. But I watched people come in, and I even hesitate a little bit. Oh, really? We don't have to wear masks anymore? We're going to go over over. Yeah, you don't have to wear masks. You didn't have to. Did you have to wear them from the beginning? I don't know. I won't get on that bandwagon. I know exactly how I feel about it. What word they're using right now to use this fear of compliance is math psychology. They're using the word, people. It's not a conspiracy. Wake up. It's called math psychology. If I tell my children or my grand or my great, if I continue to tell them they're stupid, you know what? They could have an IQ of 140, and guess what? They'll get stupid. Yep. And that's, they're trying to make us stupid. Yep. Math psychology. Uh, let, me, let me get a little further on this one, okay? Here's the cell from this forum. Here's the cell. They're hoping because of the acceleration of COVID and how it's made things understandable that we are sheep. Um, they are looking at 2030 being the year of really presentation and throwing it out there. Yep. So, you know, we're 2023. We're talking seven years. You want me to tell you what the mantra is? What their motto, what their sl slogan is going to be? It's a picture of this really good looking guy, smiling and very pleasant. And here's the mantra. You will own nothing and be happy. You will own nothing and be happy. You will own nothing. You'll have no privacy. You'll be happy in a cashless society. Yes, there comes that currency again. That's been brought up and brought up and brought up and brought up and brought up. But that's the mantra that they're going to sell the world. That's the mantra. See, all this has to happen, people, to make the puzzle come together for the end times. Right. It's what we decide we're going to follow. It's what we decide we're going to accept. It's what we decide compares to this book. What do you mean what compares to this book? If you're not familiar with this book, there's actually a Bible in here. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you can't tell me what the mantra is about because you're not going to know what's against uh, the mantra to this book. You've got to know this book. Yeah. Yeah. This is our learning. This is our handy tool. This is our hammer as a carpenter. This is what this is. Yeah, you're going to own nothing and be happy. They're going to take our property. You've got to <laughs> rent your own stuff. They're going to change the currency. Of course, we know, we know the deal about the, the uh, what am I trying to say? The, the beast. Huh? Mark of the Beast. Yeah, Mark of the Beast. That's the same thing. You've you got to work. What's the Mark of the Beast? If you don't have this number, this digital number, you cannot do commerce. You cannot buy, sell, you cannot. But everything has to be set up. Now, this, this, this uh, group, this forum, uh, they started in 1971. Babylon was way back then, Tower of ba Babel. This has been going on. This is generating, the, Satan knows the time is short. So again, we're talking acceleration. Good chance this will not be viewed on Facebook. I mean, I'm let's be honest. I just checked. Oh, I'm still on? <laughs> okay, we're not done yet, brothers. <laughs> let's read uh, 2 Timothy 2 4. 2 Timothy 2 4. Yes, there is words to this. Okay, so preach the word, verse 1, I want to go to this, 2 Timothy 2, 4, preach the word, this is 
our instructions as believers. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. What does that mean? With knowing the word, it's, they're talking here especially about um, those called into the ministry, but are we called into the ministry, guys? Yes. Every one of us are. Okay. So it says, be ready in season and out of season. In other words, be prepared, know your stuff, understand your book. If you don't understand the book, that's okay. Read it. When the Holy Spirit wants you to, he'll make you understand it. That's how this works. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and teaching. What I am getting into now is how do we correct this? And I would say the best way to correct the things that's happening is to verbalize, to speak. So it's saying here that we can do this. These are Christians. We can convince, we can rebuke, and we can exhort. Now, Romans, this would be the counter to me. People come by and say, okay, Romans 13, 1 says, everyone must submit themselves to governing authorities. Absolutely. That is biblical. Maybe when Jesus said, uh, what's, what Caesar is Caesar? You render your taxes, you pay that. That's, that's, that's scriptural. But... In line with God's teaching. See, I even speak to a lot of women that are living in a lot of literal hell. With their spouses, they're being beat up. They've been being abused. God said that you... He says, get out. Well, I don't, I don't read that. He never intended, intended on that to be. It's okay to get out of that commitment to that person who abuses you like that. And, and, and you say, well, where are you going with all this? There is an out for, a, 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 for giving the government their authority to submit to them. And Weston, do you have pull up Acts? Uh, it's chapter 5, verse 29. This is what we're going to really live on, okay? Let, let, let's, let's, let's literally stick with this. What happened in Acts 3, Peter and uh, James were going to the temple. They're getting ready to um, do their daily prayers. That was, this is after Jesus' resurrection. And when they did, there's a man sitting that was born crippled in his 30s by the uh, gate beautiful. And he wanted money. He was begging for money, and Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but what I give, I give to you. And he reached down and he said, stand and walk. Well, the man was miraculously healed. Not only did he stand and walk, he danced. He was so excited. Well, all the people around saw this, and they knew he was born that way, and they were just amazed. Well, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees and Sadducees came in and said, oh my gosh, um, wait a minute, we know this guy, we recognize him, what's he? And so they couldn't deny the miracle either. So what they did is they pulled Peter and James in, and they were afraid to rebuke them because the people were so excited about the miracle, so they didn't know what to do. They said, guys, don't ever speak his name again. What did Peter and James do? They ran directly back out and spoke God's name. Because Jesus said, go out and win. Speak of me. Tell everybody about me. Tell where they can go. So Peter and James went out and spoke. They didn't, you couldn't shut them up. So we go, we go down to verse 29. It says, and this is in uh, chapter 5, Peter and the uh, uh, other apostles replied, when <laughs> Peter and James already been corrected and released, they went back out and they were in jail, miraculously were released by an angel, they went straight to the temple and started speaking again. They were standing there, free men, speaking of God. The, the Sanhedrin has done everything it can to keep those men quiet. And there they were standing in the temple again, preaching the word. Jesus is coming back. You've got to convert. You've got to do this. And that's, that's, a, that's their mantra. Peter and James and Hospital, we must obey God rather than man. That's our mantra. You know what I just realized? I can't talk without my hands. <laughs> we 
can't. We must obey God rather than men. This is where we're at. So we have to speak. What happened when Bud Light come out with this controversy? Oh, Pat, now you're meddling. We know that a transgender represented Bud Light made them a person on their can, right? What happened to Bud Light when this happened? You know, I got a what happened is our people spoke. We got tired of being kicked into a corner. Our people spoke. We didn't tear up Jack. We didn't destroy a town. We didn't start him on fire. They spoke. And they spoke loudly by this, right? What happened in Virginia, not too long ago, the, they were having a uh, teacher's meeting, uh, you know, annual business meeting thing going on at the, high, at the school, and um, the score, uh, school board meeting, and what they were doing, what the state of Virginia was trying to do is indoctrinate the preschoolers with this garbage. And if you want to know what garbage is, look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. That's the garbage I'm talking about. They were trying to indoctrinate our babies because that's where Germany went. That's where so many countries went. They know to grab hold of our babies, indoctrinate them, brainwash them with psychological warfare right there on our children yeah. to convert them and make them think otherwise. That, Pat, you are so old you don't understand. No, I'm not that old. I understand what the Word said. The Word did not change. So the school board had uh, just was inundated with upset parents trying to shove this garbage down their baby's throats. Yeah. They were just unbelievably mortified. Well, let me tell you an example. So Virginia got on the bandwagon and they, they, un they annulled this. They stopped it. So did the state of New Jersey. Other states have fallen suit to that. Thank God for that, because people spoke. You think, well, it's not that bad here in Oklahoma. My baby granddaughter, she's eight years old. My baby granddaughter, this was last week, I believe, or the week after, before. She's out in the playground. And Cassidy has been raised in church. We have shoved that stuff down her throat that people say, well, you shouldn't, yeah, we should. Yeah, we should. Yes. Amen. Those are our babies. Amen. So Cassie pretty much knows the word. And she's out in the playground, and that girl loves everybody. Um, but this one little girl came up to her, and she says, I have two mommies. Uh-oh. She's got, yeah, I have two mommies. And Cassie said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how do you have two mommies? She said, well, I do. Cassie said, where's daddy? I don't have a daddy. Cassie goes, mm -hmm. <laughs> my eight-year-old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. And Cassidy was just irate. She was irate that this was shoved in this child's throat. And she goes, you have a daddy, but I know you got a father, too. Look at my eight-year-old, eight-year-old granddaughter. She knows the book. We cannot not speak. We have to speak. These babies are hearing them. Yeah. 
And if they aren't hearing it at home, they're hearing it from others. And you can't hide them. I know I love homeschooling. Don't get me wrong. But they get outside some days. And this is a, we have to speak. We do. This is our responsibility. Yeah. It's not family face responsibility. It's ours as a parent first. Right. Yeah. So she knew. She knew. I'm so proud of her. No, I have two mommies. One of them may be. The others is not. Your mom may have a roommate. She does not have your mommy. And yes, there is a dad out there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. If you think staying silent protects you, you're wrong. It'll come back to bite you. Let's just take this for, for instance, not even a child, let's say an adult. You're standing downtown and you're getting ready to cross the road. You know there's a lot of traffic coming in. This person in front of you just walks out in front of the car. What would you do? Just let them walk? You'd stop them or you'd grab them or you'd do something, but you'd do something. We have to do something for this nation. Does, are the end, is the end times coming? Absolutely, it's going to happen. But let's say not on our watch. Can we say that much? Fight, speak, grab. It isn't that we're being, oh, you're a Christian. Yeah, that's why I'm doing this. I'm not setting anything on fire. I'm trying to set hearts on fire. All this that I've just read about, I've told you about this form and all that, it's going to happen during the seven years. But there's a rapture coming. And what is a rapture for those who don't know? The rapture is for all of us who believe in Christ, who have given our heart to Christ. He will come back. Jesus will come in a cloud, and there will be a, a, a trumpet sound, and in a twinkling of an eye, we are going to be taken up into heaven. Those of us who are still alive, this can happen. Those of us who died before us, they will be taken up, their bodies will be taken up and translated uh, into a heavenly body. But this will happen prior to this stuff I was telling you about, the, the finality of the one world government. The one world government is preparing, but we are also preparing. Okay? So, um, if we have given our, God, our heart to God, we are going to be taken out of this place. And it would be nice to happen on a Sunday morning and we all just disappear. But let, let me tell you something. Brother Jeffers that has a, a, a First Baptist down in uh, Dallas, big, huge, beautiful church, he said this. Do you know that next Sunday there will be church at First Baptist? Do you know next Sunday there will be church at Family Faith? Well, wait a minute, you just said we'd be raptured. Really? 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 Have you given your heart to God? Have you surrendered yourself? Or are you still, still straddling that fence? You're straddling the fence, you're going to be sitting here, you'll be there the next Sunday after the rapture. It's true. It's true. I don't think about it that way. I'm thinking, okay, the rapture's gone. We're going to go, the, the building will be vacant. They'll just take it over and do whatever they want to the building. We'll have church. You can't straddle a fence. You gotta make up your mind. This is where we're at. This is where we're at. Uh, Brother Jeffers said something and I, this is just our analogy, this is our story to this, but I really believe this too, um, that when the rapture happen, happens, I believe there'll be a huge catastrophe happen at the same time, like, like 
on the, in the world. And a lot of people will be killed or disappear or whatever else. So after that catastrophe, you know, it's going to regroup again. You've got to go through the seven years. And that's how they're going to dismiss the church being gone, the Christians being gone. And I kind of think that could be that way. I don't know. That's just me. That's Pat one-on-one. You can take that. It's not in the Bible, I promise. But something to deter the world from thinking anything different than other, well, they died in the catastrophe, they got to, and they dismiss it, and then they come to church the next Sunday, and it's like, well, where's so-and-so? Oh, they must have died in the catastrophe. Are you hearing me? Uh-huh. It makes sense to me, but it doesn't, like I said, that's not, <laughs> just forget what I just said. The form is trying to demean God. The world is trying to demean God. The church is trying to build God's people up. And this is our position that we cannot negate. We must obey God rather than man. Amen? Amen. Let's stand. As Emily said, look on Facebook and get that uh, deal on uh, the Great Reset. Again, it's so close. The analogy of of our uh, one world government is ridiculous. But again, the Antichrist is probably well and doing well and, and maturing into his position as we speak. Because this can't, the rapture just can't happen without preparation. And, and God gives us so many red flags to pay attention to. He's good that way. Let's pray. Mickey, go ahead and start playing, honey. Father, I know there, there's absolutely nothing too great for you, Lord. Lord, right now I pray for hearts that have not surrendered to you completely. Lord, that they see the time crunch happening, the size nine gene. Lord, help us, Father, make a decision to follow you. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, he got speedy eyes. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Holy Spirit. Father, prick hearts right now. Just open eyes and minds to you, Father. Let them speak your word in boldness and in truth. Give us that, Holy Spirit, that we can reach others that can come with us together in this rapture that is so near. Let us stand in the gap for our babies. Let us say no to the insanity and yes to you, Father. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you. Lord, let us see differently than we've ever seen your power and your guidance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, in your name. If there's anyone who needs prayer today, I would love to pray with you. But if you want to give Christ, your heart to Christ today, I am so ready to help you with that. We have many prayer warriors here. But let's, let's take a moment and please come down if you need any kind of attention.